Hello, everybody. Good morning, USA. Happy Mother's Day. We love and appreciate all you moms out there, and uh, you are precious in the sight of the Lord. Welcome to our live broadcast coming to you on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm Pastor Scott from Lighthouse Church in the city of Laguna Niguel, California. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing well, uh, staying positive. I believe things are getting better every day. The Bible says in Proverbs 15:30, a good report makes the bones healthy, makes one strong and healthy. Or good and positive words make us and keep us healthy. I thought I'd start with a little levity. Um, this is for you, Joe. Why did the scarecrow become so famous? Because he was outstanding in his field. Think about it. All right. <laughs> The Word of God is positive and beneficial and effective in our lives. It's a medicine and also a spiritual food that feeds your very spiritual nature. Receive His Word today and be changed thereby. I want to talk to you today about giving and receiving a good report and how important that is as believers in Christ. But first, my second daughter, Christy, has a few words to share with you. She is the voice of Light Words, our podcast ministry. So when you listen to our podcast, LN Lighthouse, You'll hear Christy's voice, and she does a fantastic job, and we give thanks for that. Christy? All right. Thanks, Dad. Um, we've actually had a lot, of more, a, lo- a lot of increase in the traffic in our podcast, which is so, so awesome. Praise God. So praise the Lord for that. Um, if you're not a subscriber, we encourage you to subscribe to our podcast, Light Words, and you can do that on iTunes by searching Scott Huffman. Um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it's really important, not only do we read the word, but we hear the word. And you can listen to your podcast in the the car when you're driving, when you're working out, in the morning with your cup of coffee, before you go to bed. (laughs) So if you want to increase your spiritual life, your faith life, then I definitely encourage you to to, uh, listen to our podcast, Light Words. And um, you can give and support Lighthouse through Venmo at LN Lighthouse. Um, Giving is a form of worship and it really pleases the Lord. And so giving is really important. I just wanted to read a scripture really fast. It's in Proverbs. It's um, verse three or chapter three, verse nine and ten. And it says, "Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine." And the Lord promises to give back. So I just encourage you to stretch your giving. And if you're not giving, start giving because the Lord promises to give back, and I really feel like that's going to open up the windows of blessing in your life. It's the only place in the scripture where God says, test him Mm -hmm. and see if he will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you can't even contain. So uh, giving is an important part of our walk in Christ. Praise God. Amen. So again, you can uh, can give through Venmo at LN Lighthouse. Um, I also just want to encourage you to like us on our social media. Um, So that's our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter. Um, it's also, it's a good way to share the good news, share with others. We're also on LinkedIn too. Oh, yep. LinkedIn too. Yeah. Yep. So, Find my dad. um, become, <laughs> become friends with us, like us, share us. That's a good word, a good way to just cast the net and spread the word. Um, and then lastly, but not lastly, I just want to say happy mother's day to all you moms. We appreciate and thank, thank you for all that you do. Yes. Happy mother's day, mom. I love you. Happy mother's day, Kylie. This is a special mother's day for our family because we have two moms to celebrate. And yes. grandma, but um, we just we love you and thank you for all that you do. So don't forget to tell your moms how much you love them. And give them a big hug. That's right. <laughs> so good to be in the house of the Lord, amen, even though we're in our living room. So mm-hmm. praise God. All right, Christy, why don't you begin reading Exodus 15, 26. This is one of those watershed scriptures. Uh, it's one of the seven names of God, Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord who heals you. Um, I am your good physician. And everybody needs a good physician, right? Yeah. All right, Exodus 15, 26. Okay. And he said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. It's interesting with that. that we're going to pray here in a minute. But uh, I will put none of these diseases on you. So Jehovah Rapha, he's our healer, but he also is the one that keeps us well. And it's called divine health in the Bible. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Third John. So uh, God is protecting us from disease and keeping disease off us. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the word. 
We pray for every person listening to our broadcast and who will eventually listen to it during the week. Lord, touch them mightily. Let the healing anointing come upon them. Let the protective power of the Lord Jesus be upon them. And let hope arise and faith. And let them think positive things, Lord, on this Mother's Day. We love you and praise you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen, amen. All right. Well, the Bible declares death and life are in the power of the tongue or in the power of speech. So with our speech, we can create things or destroy things. Kind of interesting. God spoke the world into existence. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light, right? Amen. So today we want to talk about faith's confession, and Christy, I'll have you read again Romans 10, 8 through 10. Faith's confession. You see, we believe in our hearts, but we speak through our mouths. And uh, it's important the two work simultaneously together. And that's how faith works. And so we do need to confess the word of God on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay, Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. There it is. The heart believes and the mouth confesses. Praise God. Now, when I was young, I suffered from an inferiority complex, and I had poor self-esteem as a child and into adulthood. I grew up with an overbearing father who was very critical and verbally abusive, condescending with his words. And I don't hold that against my dad. He's in heaven. God bless you, dad. But uh, some things happen in life we don't understand why, and some of us grow up with uh, a damaged self-esteem. And it caused me not to feel good about myself. I played basketball in high school. I was average, okay, I guess. But at the time, I had a confidence problem. And it didn't help that the coach was much like my dad, very critical and demeaning. But then later in life, I got a word from the Lord from a man of God. And he didn't know who I was, but he came right from the Lord. He said, you've had several traumas, Scott, in your life. And it's caused you to not feel good about yourself. And it's damaged your self-esteem. He said, God's going to change that, praise God, and give you a good feeling about yourself and bring confidence into your life in using your abilities for the Lord and to to bring about a positive outcome in your life. And so God has done that for me. And I feel good about myself today. Uh, Not perfect, but I feel pretty good about myself. And God has healed me. Sometimes God heals our physical body. Sometimes he heals our spiritual body, our emotional body. And he is the healer in all ways, body, soul, and spirit. Praise God. You know, when you believe in someone, they'll believe in themselves. And as we believe in each other, we believe more in ourselves. And Jesus said, we're to love one another as we love ourselves, or love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so it's important that we have a good self-esteem in life, amen? Well, Jesus spoke gracious words in his ministry over the people, and it astounded them. They'd never heard anybody like this, the kind of gracious words that were coming out of his mouth. And it was very attractive, see? He had great favor with people. Believers should have favor with other people. We should be attractive, amen, to other people because of the grace of God upon us. And Jesus still speaks gracious words over us today. Marilyn, could you read Luke 4.22? Gracious words, wow, the power of speech. People like Grace Kelly and uh, Kennedy, what was her name? (laughs) Jackie Kennedy, thank you. Uh, They were very gracious women, and they had a great appeal about them. Uh, I believe uh, President Trump's wife, Melania, has graciousness about her. And uh, that's a wonderful trait. It's a God-given trait. And we should pray, Lord, that there'd be more grace, so we'd have grace upon grace. Amen? Okay, Marilyn. Okay, Luke 4, 22. So all who bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, is this not Joseph's son? Amen. Is this not Joseph's son? The carpenter? (laughs) Son of a carpenter? Yeah. Who became a mighty prophet, mighty in word and mighty in deed. We love you, Lord Jesus. Gracious words have a divine influence upon a person's heart. A divine influence. That's why they're so important. Let's look at Colossians 4, 6. Christy? Sometimes, you know, we say things we don't mean or we really should not have said. And it damages, hurts people. 
And I've been guilty of that. I'm sure all of us have been guilty of that. And we need to really ask the Lord to put a guard over our mouths and our speech and be careful that we do not speak demeaning words or critical words, but we want to speak words that are going to lift people up, strengthen them, and build them up in the faith. Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Amen. Seasoned with salt. As we've been talking about cooking. I've been doing my cooking thing in this uh, quarantine time. And uh, it's amazing how salt influences the flavor of food, enhances it. And uh, we, with our speech, is it seasons with salt. We can enhance people and, and edify people and lift them up. Edification literally means to build up. It's the goal of the believer to lift people up to a higher place in life and in the kingdom of God. Marilyn, could you read Ephesians 4, 29 through 32? Again, referring, the Apostle Paul, referring to our speech. And a lot of people say, you know, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That is totally a lie. (laughs) Words can do a lot more damage than sticks and stones sometimes. And so uh, words are powerful. They create and they destroy, right? We, We talked about death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay. Ephesians 4.22, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it might impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God is for, as Christ forgave you. And I like that, being tender-hearted forgiving one another as God has forgiven us in Christ. And that should be the attitude of a Christian. A Christian should be a forgiving person and uh, not hold a grudge. And so many people, you know, I'll I'll just get even, you know. That's not the message of Christianity. And uh, Jesus said, turn the other cheek, right? And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so we ought to have that kind of attitude in our hearts. You know, the tongue can set the fires of hell ablaze. And that's what's so dangerous about speech if it's used in the wrong way. But if it's used in the right way, it'll lift people up. It'll strengthen them. It'll bless them. Years ago, I got another word from the Lord that, I, that stated I had been given a gift from the Lord that I would be able to build people in the body of Christ. And I believe this is a spiritual gift that God has given me. I speak, uh, I preach prophetically many times and the word goes directly to a person's heart and it's coming from the voice of the Lord. And so as I preach the word, you're gonna grow, grow in Christ. You're gonna get stronger in God. Hallelujah. Don't you wanna be? I do. And that we might grow mighty in the spirit. Praise God. Now we're talking about the power of healing words. A recent study has shown that encouraging words from a healthcare provider can help patients recover. We've got a healthcare provider right here. Christy's an RN. Praise God. Pray for her. Hallelujah. But a healthcare provider can help patients recover and recuperate faster from their ailments and also keep them well. Power of speech. Now, I've had some good experiences with healthcare providers and doctors, and I've had some bad experiences. And I always find that their words and demeanor make me feel better or worse. Doctors, think about it, right? Uh, you can heal through your hands, but you can also heal through your speech. Praise God. Uh, perhaps you've had some of those experiences as well. You know, when you, when you go to the doctor, you feel very vulnerable. And, uh, you know, when they, they give you a bad report, you just go, thank you, hey, I love that, yeah. <laughs> no, you, you freak out, right? <laughs> Your blood pressure spikes, and, you know, they're trying to, you know, and all this. And, uh, uh, but, I, but I have a certain doctor that I go to, he's a dermatologist, and he is a great man. And he's actually Jewish, praise God. And uh, he has that kind of quality. All of our family goes to him, and he just has this wonderful demeanor about him. He's very calm. Uh, and, and he doesn't, he's not an alarmist. And you know, I had a pretty serious thing right here. I had a, a melanoma, which ugh, I don't even like to say the word, but it came out of nowhere. It was a mole and uh, he removed it. Praise God. Now I've got a scar across here. I'm a tough guy. <laughs> but uh, he said, you had the best case scenario for that because it could have been a lot more serious, but I was at the best spot to have it removed and praise God, it's gone. Amen, hallelujah. So healthcare providers do provide service with their speech and also with their hands. Um, Patients who received encouragement had less severity in their symptoms. They did a study actually, and they gave these patients, or they were volunteers, uh, some form of 
allergen that caused them to itch, and they wanted to see what would happen with the doctors that were encouraging and, uh, and, and trying to uh, lift them up and not to, uh, to assure them that they were gonna be okay. And the patients that had those kind of doctors uh, had less itch and recovered more quickly. And the ones that didn't have the encouragement and the assurance suffered longer and more greatly. So p- power of speech. Let's look at Proverbs 16, 24, Christy. Dad, a lot of people are saying happy Mother's Day. Oh, good. All right. Well, I'm not a mother, but, <laughs> <laughs> but mom's a mother. <laughs> We're talking to each other. I know. Good. Talk. Just keep talking. And if you get a chance, listen to me too as well. <laughs> Okay, this is another good one. Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are like honeycomb, sweetness to the soul, and health to the bones. Health to the bones. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my sayings. Let them not part from thy eyes, keep the mist in thy heart. For they are life to those who find them, and they are health to all your flesh. God's word is health to your flesh. It's the best medicine we can take. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Now, we need strength for our journey through life, especially now with this COVID-19 virus. And that strength comes from the power of words, the power of speech. You know, Elijah the prophet, he needed strength as well for his journey, and he also needed encouragement. He had just defeated the 450 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel and executed them. They were pagan uh, prophets, false prophets, and God cleansed that off the planet. Praise God. But... The queen, Jezebel, who is the most wicked woman in the Bible, did not like that. And she was indignant indignant and enraged. And she said, I'm going after that guy, and I'm going to kill him. And uh, here was the queen of, of, of the northern uh, Israel uh, set against this mighty prophet of God. Elijah's probably one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. And what did Elijah do? He took off running. Woo! He was so fast, he passed a chariot going. I mean, he ran in the spirit, baby. I mean, he was doing the Forrest Gump. Uh, and that's the power of God. I had that happen to me once. I ran in the spirit. You say, now you're, now you're crazy, Pastor. But I was camping once, and we were backpacking. And I was with some friends. It was college days. And I said, you know what, guys? I feel like running. I'm going to run. And I had just flip-flops on, you know, tank top and a suit, I think, bathing suit. I took off running down the trail, and it was uphill. And I felt this supernatural power on me, and I kept running and running and running. And finally, I just like Trump, I mean, not Trump, Susie, <laughs> Forrest Gump. They do rhyme. Okay, I just wanted you to know that. Uh, so I said, I think I'll stop running. I think Forrest Gump did that too, man, I just stopped running. And I sat up on a big boulder. My friends came up a while later, and they're like, where did you go? I go, well, I don't know. I think I just ran in the spirit. <laughs> so Elijah was running in the spirit, but he was running because he was afraid. And he needed encouragement because he knew this woman meant business. And um, so we want to look at this story in 1 Kings 19, 4 through 8, Marilyn. Very interesting story. You know, sometimes we get discouraged in life, even as Christians. We get downtrodden and uh, we think, hey, it's over. Life's, you know, just not treating me well. And we can all feel that way. And during this epidemic, I think a lot of us have experienced those mixed emotions, mixed bag of emotions and feelings of, of what's going on in our lives. You know, is this gonna go on forever? And, and you know, what, what's the future look like? And you know, we gotta keep our minds renewed to the word of God and keep our minds focused on the promises of God because all the promises of God are yes and amen. Praise God. Okay, Mary. All right, uh, 19, four. Um, but, he, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. Broom prayed. tree, I like that. A broom tree. And oh, he, I think I'll have a broom tree. <laughs> <laughs> and he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly there an angel good. touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and he ate and he drank, and he went in strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. Amen. 40 days and 40 nights and the strength of that food. Pretty powerful. Praise God. You know what? Two things I think are trending right now. One is, is uh, cooking. People are really getting into the cooking thing. 
uh, being a, a chef, quality chef, and gardening is happening. And when we do get out, sometimes we'll go to a, a, a nursery, and they're pretty crowded. People are getting into the nursery thing, gardening, and uh, that's good because you're in your backyard, if you have a backyard, and you're doing something with your time, amen? Uh, and so it makes you feel good to, to uh, build a garden, praise God. We've just bought some heirloom tomato plants, and we're hoping we're gonna have a big crop of tomatoes coming in. Love tomatoes. Even though Dr. Gundry says not to eat tomatoes. But uh, I still like them. Forgive me, doctor. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting, Elijah's freaking out. He's running out into the wilderness to die. I mean, he's really depressed. Now this is, this is the mighty man of God who's in a state of depression. Sometimes we find ourselves in that place in life. And he says, I just wanna die. This woman's after me and I know what, she's relentless. She's indignant. She's go, coming after me, okay? And so he thought, I'll just die out here, God. But the Lord had a different plan for Elijah. And an angel shows up. Angels strengthen us, guys. They're here to minister to heirs of salvation, which are believers in Jesus Christ. When Jesus was in the wilderness and he defeated the devil and the temptations of the devil, he defeated him with the word of God. And the Bible says the devil left him for a while, that he was gonna come back again. But when he left him, the angels of God ministered to the Lord Jesus. I've often wondered, what, what, what did they do to him? What, what, how did that happen? I do not know. All I know is it strengthened him. And sometimes angels come and strengthen us. Sometimes we entertain angels unaware. So Elijah has an angel appear to him and feeds him right there a meal. And then he's so tired he goes back to sleep again. But the angel said, arise and eat. There's power in that word, arise and eat. He goes to sleep, he wakes up again and again. Arise and eat. And, and with that strength, that supernatural strength that came from that food, which was energized by the power of God, he went out 40 days, 40 nights, farther out into the wilderness. And when he finally got to this one spot, God began to speak to him in a still, small voice. And he heard from the Lord. Praise God. And that encouraged Elijah. I want to conclude with one of my favorite stories in the Bible, and yet it, it didn't have a great outcome for the people who failed to believe. If you don't believe, you won't receive, amen? And if you doubt, you'll go without. But there were a, a few, a couple people were exceptions. They were believers, and they were strong in their faith and gave glory to God and being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was able to perform. So in this story that we're gonna look at, we're gonna close, it's a contrast between a good report, or I call it a faith report, and a bad report, or an unbelief report, or a report of doubt. The children of Israel had come to Kadesh Barnea. Now they had left Israel, excuse me, they had left Egypt, they had been slaves for 400 years, and under the mighty hand of God, he led them out through signs and wonders, as the servant of the Lord, Moses, led them out into the wilderness to go and worship God. And out there they received the law of God, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, which are still true today as ever before, and then they came to Kadesh Barnea about two years later. And this was the point where it would either happen or not. They were right on the border of the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised that flowed with milk and honey. And at this point, the Lord spoke to Moses and he said, send out 12 spies from each tribe. Go into the land and see if this is not indeed blessed land, a land flowing with milk and honey, a prosperous land. And so the spies' stealth assignment went into the land. And Christian, we want to look at this in Numbers 13, 23, and 24. Very interesting. God had promised them this land. And he said, now go in, spy it out, it's going to be yours. God is not a man that he should lie, and the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it, will he not do it? Has he spoken it, will he not bring it to pass? If God speaks a word, he's going to do it in your life. He's going to be faithful. God is faithful. Everybody say that. God is faithful. Amen. And God is good. Praise God. 13, 23, 24, please. Thank you. Okay. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. Amen. Praise God. So they come to this Eshkol, and there they see the pomegranates, the figs, the grapes, 
it was truly a land flowing with milk and honey. It was a very prosperous land. Now let's read verse 27. Okay. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey and this is its fruit. Yes. Okay, verse 28. 28 sorry. Never, uh, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Right. Okay, so here comes the bad report. They saw the land was blessed. It was prosperous, flowing with milk and honey, and everything God had promised about them. By the way, we've been to Israel, and it's a blessed and beautiful land mm-hmm. today. And there's, they've planted like a million trees. It's beautiful. Um, and they're blessed people, praise God. But they chose to speak a bad report because they got their eyes on the circumstances of life and they didn't stay in faith looking at the promises of God and the word of God. And so they said, yeah, it's a great land, but there's people in here and they're intimidating and we can't, we can't take this land. And they began to speak a bad report. Now, verse 30, there was a man named Caleb. Okay. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. See, Caleb was a man of faith and a man of possession. We are to be people of faith and people of possession. We're to take the land in Jesus' name, amen? And we're not to be intimidated. Caleb was a good man, a spiritual man, a man of faith. And the spirit of faith is the spirit of victory, guys. And when you have the spirit of faith in you, you have the spirit of victory. Praise God. Now let's look at verse 32. Okay. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. And verse 33. There, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Enoch came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in their own sight, and we were in their sight. They were intimidated, grasshoppers in the, in the face of these giants. And they, already, they made the conclusion, we can't do it. We can't take the land, and we're not going in. And they brought a bad report back to the children of Israel. And uh, they paid a price for that. You know, We have a choice in life to either give a good report or a bad report. Make a decision to give a good report. Report the things that God has spoken, that God is doing. And don't give your, your circumstances control in your life, but take control over your circumstances by speaking the word of God in your life, amen? And standing for victory and health and healing. Praise God. All right, let's look at chapter 14 now. We're still in Numbers. Chapter 14, verse 21. 21, okay. Okay. But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. Amen. Wow. So the Lord's been showing me that the the glory of God is coming to the earth and to the United States. God's going to pour out his glory in a way that we've never seen before. It's going to be phenomenal. And accompanying this glory, which is the visible manifestation of God, will come the miraculous. Signs and wonders and miracles are going to happen. And some people will scoff at that. But I believe it'll be a testimony to the world that God is real and he's alive. Jesus did signs and wonders. The Bible says God, Israel, is for signs and wonders, and the apostles did signs and wonders, and we're gonna do them as well, amen, because we bring this net over people and bring in millions and millions of people to Christ in this last outpouring of God's spirit. Praise God, and it's coming very soon, by the way, guys. It's coming. Okay, verse 24. Okay, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, and has followed me fully, I will bring him into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Amen. Caleb was faithful, he was a man of faith, and God said, you're going in. And your friend Joshua, he's going too. He was the successor of Moses, and he took the children of Israel into the promised land. But guess who went in? Everybody that was 19 and younger. God's gonna move on the youth in America, guys. God's gonna touch young people's lives like you can't believe, and turn them on fire with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the power of God's gonna come on these kids, like we saw in the 60s, but even greater. So pray for the youth, they're coming, they're coming in, hallelujah. Verse 38. Okay. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jeshnua, or Jephanua. That's a good word, isn't it? Jephanua. Say that 10 times. (laughs) Just I knew you. Remained alive of the men who went to spy out the land. Amen. So the two men went in, Joshua and Caleb. 
and they inherited the land. Do you want to inherit the land today, guys? You got to do it through faith. You got to believe God and his word and exercise that faith and expect that faith to come to pass. We want to give a good report what the Lord has promised and will do. God always leads us in triumph through Jesus Christ. And so we go out in victory. We speak forth victory in our lives. Go out there and be an overcomer through faith. And take the land for the Lord, praise God. We are overcomers in Christ. We are more than conquerors, super conquerors. We can overcome all things through Jesus Christ, praise God. Succumb and be a loser. Overcome and be a victor. Think about that. All right. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you and praise you for the gospel. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the people that are listening. Lord Jesus, will you touch them? Will you minister to them? If they're sick, Lord, would you heal them? We pray and believe for that and thank you for it. And if you're sitting out there or standing or whatever you're doing, or maybe you're on your little spinning cycle, uh, and you need Christ, you know you've never been saved. You don't know the Lord. And uh, if you died today, you don't know where you'd be. I want to give you a chance to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just pray this prayer in the quietness of your heart and mean it. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my wrongdoings. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I confess you as my God and Savior. I ask you now to come in and be my friend. In Jesus' name, amen. And then for those Christians, you're kind of out there. You're not close to the Lord. You need to come back to God, says the Lord. Come back, says the Lord. And I'll receive you willingly and openly. Pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a Christian, but I need to be closer to you. I desire to be in a deep relationship or a deeper relationship with you. Please minister to me and draw me close to you as I draw close to you. I love you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Hallelujah, praise God. Well, guys, great being with you today. Enjoy Mother's Day. Give your mom a hug. And guess what? We'll see you next week. God bless you.